Hi, today I want to talk about the top three things that you need to make sure you look for in a, um, in a business partner or in a strategic alliance partner. Now, it turns out there are 10 of them, but we're only going to talk about three of them today. Now, I want to set the table for why this is important. In the work that I do with helping business owners build business combinations that can successfully land contracts with the largest companies in the world, not government, the biggest issues that most folks uh, deal with is trying to go it alone, meaning it's going to take so much money and so much time, both of which they don't really have a lot of, and most of their businesses end up failing or they go in a different direction, uh, or B, they've tried partnerships and they just didn't work, in which case the issue then becomes, well, what, what, how was that partnership designed? Uh, what happened in the nature of the relationship? Just a whole host of things. So what I want to talk to you about today is out of the top 10 that you probably need to address, I want to get at three, the three most critical ones. And the first one is this, um, complementary strengths and capabilities. Now, the reason why this is important is because a lot of times projects come to you and you pick people who do similar things that you do and you're looking at this and you're going, OK, well, you, you know, if you do this, I do this. We put our combined resources together. We can do a lot more of it. And then off off they go. But they do that without really thinking through are the strengths and capabilities complementary. And in this case, there's a lot of work that goes into understanding what you're really good at and what they're good at and do those things really and truly complement one another. So that's the first thing you want to look for. The second thing, shared visions and is uh, shared vision and goals. Now, the reason this one's on the list is when you really get good at understanding how to build business partnerships and, and, and strategic alliances and whatnot, you can do a lot of it and you can probably have, you know, as many as you need to compete in the market you want to be in, which says that you don't really want to be swapping folks in left and right. And um, you, you, you don't want to put your organization through the chaos of working with somebody one day and then you're not working with them. So the idea is if you're going to start looking for really good business partners that uh, where you have shared visions and goals, then you want to be looking a little longer down the road. Hey, as I think about what my business is going to be doing three to five years from now, um, what does does my partner need to look like? What, where, do we have some agreement around um, how our approach to the market where we think the opportunities are. Um, do, do, do we believe that the, these are reasonable and rational steps to take? And if I'm going to invest my money, does that work? So when you start talking about shared visions and goals, you're really saying, is this somebody that I think I can do business with for more than just one project? It may start that way, but you might say, I want to think about six months out, 12 months out. Uh, two years out, three years out, how does, because if I'm going to invest and we're having success, then if it's somebody where it feels like we have that, what I call mutual co, uh, in, uh, mutual interdependencies, not codependencies, interdependencies, where I'm getting ahead, they're getting ahead, together we both win, now you're talking. And then the third one and the last one is reputation and credibility. The last thing you want is to have a partner um, that is dragging you down in the market, uh, to have a partner that you can't really rely on because when, when they share things with you, when they make commitments, they really aren't credible. And a lot of times people have the best intentions and they, they just, for whatever reason, don't perform. That's a separate issue. All right. Um, when we talk about credibility, what we're talking about is folks who make promises that you feel can't really be delivered on and you don't really have a history to show that they delivered on that. So when you start talking about picking partners with reputation and credibility, 
you always want to do that in the context of, okay, if we're going after the consumer business, what's the reputation and credibility of this company? If we're going after uh, government or institution business, what's the reputation and credibility of this company? If we're going after B2B for corporate business, uh, what is it for? What is the reputation and credibility of this company? If we're going after the biggest companies in the world, what does that look like? How does our reputation and credibility together land with potential customers? So there you have it. Uh, the, the, the top three that you want to make sure you look for out of the 10 that are critical to your success are complementary strengths and capabilities, shared vision and goals, uh, reputation and credibility. Uh, click the link. Uh, well, first, subscribe. Thank you. Uh, save this if, if you're on uh, Instagram. Like this if uh, I like it and save it. Uh, feel free to share this video with uh, your friends and uh, let, let them know if you, you got value. Leave me some comments below if uh, you found this helpful and there's some other things you want me to uh, to address in future, future videos. And also, uh, take the free quiz. Get your free report identifying what your bottleneck, your number one bottleneck is to you landing more contracts with the big boys. Take care. Bye for now.